You mentioned, again, one of the Hall of Fame events was sightings uh, over Kirtland Air Force Base in 1980. Mm -hmm. Just put that in context a little bit. What, well, there, there, are, there are some documents in circulation, which, again, as most of these documents are, become uh, quite a topic of controversy. Uh, they did involve a series of events, uh, sightings over Kirtland Air Force Base, as detected in film by a gentleman named Paul Benowitz, who uh, had a, a scientific technical development company uh, there that had government contracts. In fact, his office uh, resided at, at the virtually at the gate of Kirtland Air Force Base, and uh, he lived in an area of Albuquerque, uh, which overlooked a portion of the the Kirtland Manzano uh, base area, and uh, reported seeing a craft landing, and uh, over a period of time, and uh, re reported this to people. He also knew people in, in the military at Kirtland. Uh, according to the documents, uh, an investigation ensued. And uh, there was a, the military took an interest in his story. Uh, and as the story developed, it uh, began uh, developing a, a, quite a different character. As more information emerged, uh, Mr. Benowitz was uh, gaining information via his computer terminal, uh, ostensibly from, uh, from an alien civiliz civilization or life form, quite extensive material. And uh, also he was led to believe the aliens were, uh, were harassing or persecuting him, entering his home. Uh, and involved in all this were, was the, uh, the account of uh, a possible underground base or a facility near Dulce, New Mexico, uh, which has also become more known in the field in, in the last several years. Then another element of controversy uh, injected into this was the suggestion that what happened to uh, Mr. Benowitz or at least in part, was uh, uh, part of a manipulative government disinformation campaign. The idea being that he actually stumbled onto something uh, that was real and, and pertinent and perhaps involving national security. And it was felt that uh, <coughs> some kind of damage control had to ensue to ensure that uh, either his credibility would be damaged forever or he would essentially be negated as, as a credible source. And uh, Eventually, the story became so obfuscated and uh, complicated with peripheral elements that uh, at this time, it's, I don't know if we'll ever know what really happened, but the plausibility exists that, uh, yes, he did stumble onto something and uh, perhaps, uh, you know, he, he was the subject of disinformation and to see how he reacted to it. And uh, again, it's a story we may never know the full details of. Now, uh, to back up to the, the actual uh, sightings, it was actually an area called Coyote Canyon on mm -hmm. the eastern edge of the base. Now, some of these reports contained uh, uh, statements from military personnel, did they not? Mm -hmm. That they had apparently witnessed some of the same things that Benowitz was, was claiming to have seen. Yeah, there are uh, military personnel there, some of whom knew, knew Benowitz, and in later years uh, spoke highly of, of his, uh, his credibility. Uh, and felt that he, he had not purposely or uh, intentionally perpetrated uh, any kind of fabrication or hoax himself, that uh, they felt whatever he was, he was involved in was, uh, you know, either, either, either real and possibly anomalous or, again, uh, something was, you know, he, he was being fed information for, for someone's purpose, for their own, their own ends. Uh, whether these people, uh, as will later speak out publicly and whether the story will actually, you know, will gain a, a better perspective on it, that still remains to be seen. But there still remains interest in, in the, the Benowit story and, and, and the Kirtland story because of, it's so replete with, again, stories of uh, underground facilities, even under Kirtland and Albuquerque itself, uh, psychics who have detected such uh, facilities. Uh, but again, it, it as in most cases along this line, difficult to separate signal from noise. Mm. And probably unlikely we'll ever really know for sure unless uh, an accident occurs. An accident being? Well, uh, if we're dealing with humans, uh, we're dealing with human frailties and foibles and predilection for mistakes and uh, even, even the mafia has leaks and you know, accidents do happen. Uh, so you would think that as time goes on, uh, uh, it would, it would seem something along this line would happen. 
uh, <coughs> if we're dealing with humans, but then again, if we're, if we're dealing with a, a different kind of intelligence, a superior intelligence, uh, perhaps they would seem to us uh, capable of uh, conducting their, cell, their operations with impunity. Uh, or again, according to some of the accounts, including in New Mexico, uh, they're, they're working in concert to some degree. There's collusion uh, between our military, or at least some of our some of our people in one or more alien groups uh, operating in these underground facilities. Okay. Speaking of these underground facilities, again, Benowitz has has uh, actually more than one tie to the beginnings of these stories. He was involved in the investigation of a of an abduction case, uh, mm -hmm. and you can fill in the blanks here. Well, apparently, a woman was claimed to have been taken to an underground facility somewhere in New Mexico and, and witnessed some very horrific things. And yeah. Then, and then the Dulce story cropped up a little bit later about that. What, can, is there is there any connection between those, except that Benowitz is involved, or? Well, again, the, these connections, uh, there's still even a misunderstanding now of just how these things fit together, but the case in question occurred in May of 1980. And uh, we uh, happen to know uh, Dr. Leo Sprinkle, a uh, counseling psychologist from the University of Wyoming, who had been involved in UFO abduction uh, investigations for years, one of the early pioneers, in fact, in that field. Uh, also, he had been involved in investigating many of the uh, phenomena in the San Luis Valley, where we, again, first kind of got ourselves involved in this. So uh, we were able to talk to him from time to time, and we happened to, to run into him at, at a conference in uh, uh, May or June of 1980, shortly after this event had happened. And uh, you could tell uh, that whatever happened, whatever his involvement was, whatever information he heard, either seemed to be disturbing or uh, he, he was, uh, he reacted differently from that of most of the cases he's dealt with. Uh, as, as we questioned and, and found out more, it turned out that the case involved a woman and her son in the Cimarron area of New Mexico who apparently saw uh, an animal, a cow, being uh, levitated or about to be taken in, into a craft. And uh, of course they'd heard about the animal mutilations that had occurred and uh, uh, she was aghast that this would occur and she uh, jumped out of the car and apparently yelled something or, or tried to stop it from happening. And uh, through whatever series of events ensued, she and her son ended up being abducted. And according to her account, taken to an underground facility. <clears throat> now, the early accounts indicated this, this would have been Dulcie. Uh, although there are statements a woman herself made under hypnosis uh, that suggested she felt she was in the, the Las Cruces area of southern New Mexico. So that's still a little unclear. But through a, a chain of events and a chain of contacts, uh, the story uh, got back to, to Paul Benowitz, and uh, he had a personal physician uh, who uh, was able to involve Dr. Leo Sprinkle in, in the investigation early on. And so there, there were one or more uh, hypnotic regression sessions uh, involving the mother and her son, and the report being taken again underground to a facility where there were humans and aliens working together, or at least there together. And plus there were containers of what appeared to be body parts, perhaps of, of human and aliens both. <coughs> and this is where she was uh, subjected to, to procedures which are similar to those reported by people taken aboard aerial craft. And of course she was later returned uh, to the original site. And uh, the, uh, the strange thing was, and this has only come out recently, uh, it's developed that there was uh, another case that occurred actually in the late 50s of an abduction experience that a woman had uh, at what she terms the exact location of uh, the 1980 case. And although at this point we don't know the details of her story, uh, she may have been taken underground too, but that's uh, a little unclear. But uh, she knew of the Cimarron event and knew where it occurred and uh, she had kept this quiet for many years and even now the story is, is being handled with uh, you know, with kid gloves, uh, uh, they're, they're being careful about it, which they probably should be at, this, at an early stage. But again, whether there's any significance in the locations or not, that remains to be seen. Uh, but the, the case of the Cimarron case was uh, one of the very few involving uh, a reported animal mutilation or, uh, or a part of that process, you know, occurring during a, a UFO abduction. 
But again, that's more the exception than the rule. So that being the case, difficult to know how it's, that really fits into the overall scenario. Well, uh, we've heard of a, a, a case out there involving a Barbara Glasgow, uh, possibly one uh, abduction or a series of abductions in the same place in Cimarron. Now, I don't, I've not heard the name, so now I have. And her husband it's been interviewed. was peripherally involved in the investigation of the Myrna Hansen case. Right, that's it. Policeman. Yeah, that was the connection. He was a state policeman. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, there's, well, yeah, some things happening just uh, very recently in regard to that. I, as I say, I didn't know her name. Uh, my, my impression was uh, there was a, uh, you know, she was very concerned about keeping a low profile. Maybe she had. I mean, she, really? <laughs> well, she was. Well, she there was, was an bad. indication she uh, maybe she had been damaged or you know badly handled. Well, she was she's, having uh, she's, confided in someone that uh, I don't know what happened, but she was, you know, she was burned, and now is wanting to talk to someone. So I guess she, she has. Yeah, she has. <laughs>